Joining us now is Peter Tuckman, trader at Quattro Securities and Alec Young, managing director of global markets research at FTSE Russell. What do you think of the trading action we saw today? And do you think it's going to continue like you know, this? It's really, it's hard to say. I think today we sort of had a perfect storm. The story about the recession and the, you know, it's interesting if you look at recession, just basically, it's a prolonged industrial slowdown or, or, or global growth slowdown. And it's, we basically have not seen that yet. So the inverted yield curve is not predictive unless it lasts for a little longer time. And the story that everybody's been spinning today was one that will suddenly, because it's been inverted for a couple of days or maybe a week or so, that this is going to be predictive of, of a recession in the future, right? And um, so I think it was sort of that plus, you know, Arthur earlier talked with you guys about what's going on around the world, whether it's in Russia or it's in Hong Kong or it's um, Pakistan and India, plus that, plus what happened, the economic news that came out of China and Germany today. So it's really one of those one day perfect storm things. Is it going to follow through tomorrow? I'm not clear. We saw a big sell off last week and a rally back. We saw the week we've had up and down days of 500 points. So we're, we're actually, if we look at it, we could be one tweet away from up a thousand or down a thousand. And I think that's what we have to look at. So I think that we have anxiety today. We have some bad economic news. We have some geopolitical stuff that's going on. So for today, it was sort of a perfect storm. We did close on the lows. It's definitely, uh, you know, worrisome. There's definitely some room for concern here. But, I, you know, it's hard to know what tomorrow will bring. Uh, Alec, what's your take uh, as to whether we're going to see the level of bearishness we've witnessed today and since the start of August play out? in corporate earnings for the rest of the year. Do you think expectations have already come down enough that when we see more earnings, it can turn around the sentiment a little bit? No, I think we're likely to see further negative earnings revisions because ironically, despite all of the weakness in global growth that's continuing to come through and yield curve inversions and weakening leading economic indicators, plunging bond yields, the irony is that the consensus on Wall Street is expecting an acceleration in corporate earnings by the fourth quarter, where growth is supposed to be up to about a five or six percent clip. And then into next year, it's supposed to be 11 percent in 2020 over 2019. So and right now, there's obviously no um, catalyst that would lead to this reacceleration in profit growth. So I think at this point, the reason the market's declining is it's pretty clear that the consensus is too optimistic on earnings and investors are anticipating negative earnings revisions. Um, and that's why I think until we see some sign of macro stability, whether it be an end to tariffs, a trade deal that ends tariffs and agrees not to put on new ones, or better um, economic data in the, in the leading indicators in particular. Um, until we see those things, I think the path of least resistance is going to be lower. Uh, investors have been very patient. They've looked at the glass as half full. And I think the bears are slowly uh, gaining momentum here. It's just not possible to be optimistic when you're seeing the kind of unprecedented collapse in bond yields across uh, the globe. That's not normal behavior. Uh, you overlay on top of that the trade uncertainty and the weak data that we're getting from major economies from Germany to China. And I think this notion that this is a, a one day event, I think, is a little bit um, overly optimistic. We investors have bought the dips up until now. I think now you're going to see momentum building um, on the downside. Peter, close at the session lows that the chart of the S&P 500 or, or Dow shows that pretty clearly steady selling throughout the day yeah. what's your take particularly with the low volume month that we're in as to whether there's no short-term uh, turnaround in sight for these so i agree with this gentleman clearly in a way that you know i think the dissemination of economic d uh, data um, by the administration i think is a bit irresponsible uh, and it's a way you know markets can pretty much absorb almost anything we've seen that over time and so I think what we're seeing is sort of that anxiety caused by that plus all the things that gentlemen spoke about around the world but the S&P chart today you know I'm a trader so we, we look at the imbalances how the markets trade on a day-to-day -day basis and we had at 1.3 billion dollars to sell right we were almost 97 percent to sell so in that way there's definitely people coming out of stocks we saw that today and that's one of the first days I've really seen that and when you see the chart that that closes at the low of the day you know it, de it definitely is a cause for anxiety Peter Tuckman, Alec Young thank you both for joining us